Well, Linda, it's absolutely heartbreaking watching that, isn't it? Oh, I, I watched it earlier and I felt such deep sadness. Um, you know, Harry and Meghan have sold themselves as the saints of ca compassion and I can't understand, no matter the hurt or pain that may have gone between their families, not to call your father when he had a heart attack to check if he was OK. Um, it, it seems very cold to me. I mean, my, my dad is a twin and he didn't get on with his twin at all. In fact, they didn't speak for 30 years. And then out of the blue, he got a phone call from his twin brother saying, I've got prostate cancer. I'm, I know we don't like each other, but just check on yourself. And my dad did, and he had it too. But because of his twin, it was caught early enough. That's what families do. No matter the hate, the fights, no matter the pain, when it comes to the crunch, you're there for each other. And it's very sad to see um, Mr. Markle like this because he, he looks a very vulnerable man, a very hurt man. And the least I think Meghan Markle could do is reach out to him before he dies. Now, Carol Malone... You can understand, and I understand, I will be criticised for even talking about this interview tonight because mm -hmm. there's a lot of royalists who say all of the focus this week should be on King Charles III, and I really wish that were the case. Mm. But because of Harry and Meghan, they have created this sideshow. It is the way that Harry and Meghan treated this family that meant this TV special took place. And there was absolutely no need for Meghan to reappear over the last week with these three publicity stunts. I can see what she's trying to do. She wants to insert herself into the conversation. Yeah. Yeah, she, that's exactly what she wants. However, I mean, the idea that she would overshadow a coronation because she's had a new hairdo is stupid. Nothing, I mean, she, you know, she's gone, if she thinks that's the case, she's gone farther down the rabbit hole than we thought. But, you know, when you watch that film there, you know, I feel desperately sorry for Thomas Markle. You know, he has been manipulated, and, and he was being a bit manipulated in that interview. But what he's saying is that, you know, it is his dying wish that, that he is reunited with his daughter. And, you know, you hear him slurring. He's learned to speak again. It's been almost a year since he's been able to speak properly. And, and the one thing he's saying is, how can I fix this? He's begging his daughter. He's literally begging her. He shouldn't have to beg the girl he brought up mm. almost single-handed. Even if they don't get together as a family again, even if they don't see each other regularly, she should make time to see him before he dies. Because I tell you what, if you don't... Don't do that with families. If you let someone die on you in, that, in the way that Thomas Markle is going to die, I suspect, without seeing his daughter, it will haunt her. You, know, you, don't, you don't get away without scars with that. And I think you're right to talk about, you know, this is a woman who sells herself on compassion. Where is her mm. compassion for this man who may not be in this world for very much longer? Samantha Markle put it quite well in, in the interview where she said, you know, she talks to Harry about losing her father. She said she didn't lose him she iced him mm. which you know basically killed him in her head he doesn't exist for her now shame on her you know absolute blooming shame on her and samantha michael will be here later in the show actually uh, for an exclusive live tv interview benjamin butterworth look this is a state event the coronation but it's also a family event and isn't it really sad to see the impact that Meghan Markle has had on two families? Because it's not just the Markles who she's torn apart, is it? It's also the Windsors, the family of our king. The king will not have his grandchildren, will not have his youngest son there for most of this weekend's events. I mean, look, I, I think Prince Harry had made his mind up about how he perceived Charles and William and the rest of the royal family before Meghan Markle ever turned up. So I, they didn't fall I, I think it would be an exaggeration to, to blame that on her. I think there's no doubt with those repeated ex appearances in the last week, and we'd spent months saying what happened to Meghan Markle. Mm. She had gone mysteriously quiet. Mm. Even when Spare, Harry's memoir, mm. came out, she didn't say a word. And so you'd have to be naive to think this wasn't anything but a pre-planned publicity stunt to do exactly as you said. But when it comes to Thomas Markle, you know, he spoke you know, at greater length there than I've seen him do before. He's quite a quiet man, it always seems, in his interviews. He's not naturally someone who wants to share his personal emotions. But ultimately, I, you know, whether it's about these two or generally, I don't think a daughter owes a father anything if they've made the decision to cut them off. Why? And we don't know what might have happened behind closed doors. Who knows for any host of reasons why they might have fallen out before this royal we do but, but, don't, but don't you think that, you know, Thomas Markle has been a victim in all this since the start. Before the wedding, the royal family made a massive mistake they should have sent 
sent two people over to America to look after him. The world was coming for Thomas Markle as being the father of the bride, and yet he was left alone to deal with this this you know, barrage but of also, media. He hasn't um, done anything. And he's done nothing that wrong. Harry and Meghan haven't done yes, themselves, exactly. which is sell their story. It's not criminal to do that. I, th I think I think actually he was taken advantage of when that initial photo came out. So I, I have a great right. deal of sympathy. Was. The person I don't have sympathy with, and it'd be interesting to hear from her, is, is Samantha. Why? Martin. Because you know she tried to bring a lawsuit against Meghan for defamation that got thrown out the first opportunity. Well, by the she judge. says that she's going to take that back actually back into uh, court. I think but, she's been trying to make more money and attention off this than anybody else involved in the process. I think you're right, and Thomas Markle is the victim of all this. He has been from day one. No one's actually looked after him, not his family, not the family we've seen on this film, and, and not Meghan. And they should all be ashamed of themselves. This guy may not live for very much longer. Well, Carol, who have been the two people there by his side since the stroke? Well, Thomas well, Markle said, well, Jr. You, well, no, and because Samantha Markle. I'm not sure that's true. The film is, said they haven't been in the same room since the wedding. Yes, but Thomas Markle Jr. Uh, immediately moved his life to be alongside Thomas Sr. Of course, uh, Samantha Markle has lots of physical uh, mm -hmm. issues. Yes, she's got MS. She, she has multiple sclerosis. Harry and Meghan are, are polling lower than Prince Andrew in America at the moment. Their popularity mm. has completely slumped. They're not going to ruin or touch the coronation. They're not, no. not going to have any impact, I think, at all on it. Harry's going to dip in and out, thank goodness. I, I mean, I, and it will, I, be, it will be Charles's day, and it's the British public's day. It's you, not the Harry and Meghan show. Them. Well, I want to know, will Harry and Meghan swear the allegiance to the king? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we, we, we have to swear allegiance to him, don't we? If we swear allegiance to John, yeah, the, we uh, have to swear allegiance to Harry will too. Will Meghan. Bad news. Very, very <laughs> interesting <laughs> question, Belinda to Lucy, Benjamin Butterworth, Carol Malone. I can say almost certainly Meghan will not. But coming up...